what we're doing now is not working. We're losing our kids. And if it's not your kid being lost to a gang, it's your kid being murdered by a gang member. And we're all vulnerable, all of us. Every day, Deputy District Attorney Steve Ibsen sees the terrible toll gangs have taken on all levels of our society. As a prosecutor, he has to deal with the criminals and the victims of gang stabbings, gang rapes, and drive-by shootings conducted by the gangs. He has a novel idea that we think deserves full disclosure. The gang officers are doing their best, okay? Everyone wants to beat the problem. Now, Sheriff Baca wants to beat it. Chief Bratt wants to beat it. Everyone in the community wants to beat it. But we, I think we're spending $90 million a year on it. We're not beating it. It's winning. I think what so, we have to do is recognize where are gang members coming from. Okay, they're not static. They're kids. They're approaching kids who are 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. They're recruiting from the ranks of our children. So one concept, we have to divide the group and say, look, if you can stop that recruitment, if you can protect the kids, you can isolate these kids so they, they're not back in the gangs. You know, in one generation, the gang problem ends. So, I think first of all, you have to let uh, every adult gang member, every 18-year-old and up now, if you're going to commit a crime, you stay away from the juveniles. And you have an enhancement, you have a crime if you're uh, with our juvenile gang members, once they're on probation to the, to the courts, uh, they have electronic monitoring. And if the, an adult is with, uh, if you're a gang member and you're violating a curfew, you have a curfew for all the gang members. If you're an adult with a, a minor, uh, make it a felony. If you commit a crime with a minor, at, uh, double it, make it like a two strike. You know, you have a, you double, a doubled sentence or a two, three, or five year enhancement. If you cut this electronic monitoring device off of a minor, you're going to get an enhanced sentence. You have to make it a much tougher punishment if you're an adult using kids in your crimes. You have to make it so, such a punishment that the adult gang members say that it's not worth me having this 13, 14, 9 year old, 10 year old as part of my gang. Just take them off the streets. So that would discourage adults. But how about the juveniles? How would he take them off the street, as he claims? We ask him to explain the details of his plan. Every case in California, whether juvenile or adult, the judge has to, have a, has to make a finding, or the jury has to make a finding, whether this is gang-related. Because right now, there is no such finding. We, there are gang cases, and there's robberies. So a police officer may look at the rap sheet, and he just sees robbery. We don't have a designation. This is a registered gang offense. So we need to, first of all, law enforcement needs to know if this is a gang conviction, whether it's a juvenile or an adult. For every juvenile, if it's a gang-related offense found by the judge, there should be, if it's a gang-related offense or a uh, serious or violent crime, there needs to be a mandatory minimum of six months in a camp or juvenile hall and give the, the juvenile and his parents the option. Uh, if you don't want to do this minimum six months, you can have an electronic monitoring device on you. You can go back and live with your family. Let's give them a chance. These are kids. They're kids who can do very evil and damaging things, but they're still kids. So with this electronic monitoring device, you say, here are the orders. You're going to take a two-year, two-week boot camp that's going to do two things. It's going to show you the result of crime. We're going to teach you how criminal sentencing is. We're going to teach you what three strikes is so you know what crime, uh, the crime doesn't pay. You'll know what happens to you if you continue on this path. And then we'll give you one week where you can learn how your electronic monitoring is going to shut you, shut your gang down and, and pull you out of the gang and show you opportunities. It'll show you the classes you can take, uh, tech centers you can, you can enroll in, and require every juvenile who has a gang-related offense to have a curfew in by 9 o'clock and mandatory. You're either in school, you're in a uh, uh, program to teach you a trade, or you're working every day. And your electronic monitoring device will verify it. And, and isolate them that way. So electronic monitoring becomes the keystone of Mr. Ibsen's plan. It would monitor the juvenile, but serve as a big warning flag to adult gang members. If you're an adult, you're going to see this person is being monitored. They are a ward of the state. We're taking them back from the gang. They're not going to be out at night. If they are, we'll know it. And if we catch them with you, you're, you as an adult will have a felony, and your punishment will be severe. Every adult that goes through, if his uh, crime is gang-related, he has, you know, we have to make sure we educate them. Stay away from the kids. You, you drive a wedge between the juvenile relationship and the recruiting of gangs and the adults. So you have tough sentences for the adults and give the kids a chance. Mr. Ibsen's focus is to give the kids a chance. In fact, he has personal plans for his own kids that he thinks is applicable to the gangs on the street. Uh, I have a daughter born shortly. I will absolutely drug test my daughter. 
even if I think she's not doing drugs, because that will give her the ability to say, I can't do that, my dad tests me every day. Okay, what I like to call this is tagging you're out. Once we catch a juvenile for any gang crime, gang related, he's tagging. Boom, electronic monitoring on. That kid now can tell the other kids in his neighborhood, I'm out. They got me. I'm tagged. You don't want me with you. If I'm with you, you're going to get caught. If I'm with you and you do get caught, your sentence is doubled. Okay, because you make, he's of no good. You've just saved that kid. Okay, but if he doesn't have that excuse, give, give the kids the excuse to say no. Because a lot of them don't see an option. You know, if they say no, they're beaten up. If they say no, they're killed. If they say no, they're ridiculed. But if they can blame the government and say, tag, I'm out, I'd love to go do that drive-by with you, but I can't. Okay? Every, every kid you tag, you save. So you and tag the kids to make them a liability to the adult gang members. But wouldn't this program be expensive, we ask him? According to Sheriff's Department statistics, there are more than 56,000 gang members in Los Angeles County. How would we pay for this massive program? I'm against raising taxes. I think we pay enough taxes to, for law enforcement purposes. However, I think the individuals that are committing crimes, uh, taxes on them is okay. Now, how do you tax criminals? Every person out on parole, every person out on probation. If you want a driver's license, you're paying an extra 50 bucks a year. There are 200,000 people in prison. When they get out, each of those 200,000 people, if you want a license, it's a privilege, you don't have to. An extra fifty dollars a year that's a lot of money if you're on probation an extra fifty dollars a year for the next ten years you mister criminal that we're gonna let out among us because probationers we're gonna trust you again parolees we're letting you back in society here's the price you're gonna pay you're gonna kick an extra fifty bucks a year so we can protect kids from gangs and they'll pay it because they want their driver's license having criminals pay for enforcement and prevention sounds like it would work but we wondered what equipment would be required to do this monitoring. Is the technology available to make this possible? The technology is, is, is growing incredibly. There are all types of monitoring that we've, we've had for, for years now. Uh, devices where within the home, there, there's a, if you have your, your monitoring band on your wrist, your home station detects that you're at home. So it could be as simple as, it doesn't have to be GPS where you're followed everywhere. Mm -hmm. The judge might order in this county, let's say the sheriff wants to use monitoring, which is simply, you need to be at home from 10 p.m. till 8 a.m. That's pretty simple. Your wrist monitor sends a signal. Your base station at home will know if you're there or not. And it's recorded. And if you're not there, it notifies law enforcement. It doesn't require GPS tracking. But it may be that a judge wants to order GPS tracking. This is a very dangerous gang. This, this juvenile has a horrible record. It's a high-risk person. We need uh, the more sophisticated GPS tracking that has live tracking so we can know where this person is at all, at, at all moments. Being full disclosure, we investigated the technology to see if Mr. Ibsen's proposal was indeed practical. We located a very sophisticated tracking device that is designed to be worn around the ankle of an offender. We interviewed retired sheriff deputy Jerry Thompson, who's familiar with these devices, and asked him if this device could be used to track gang members. For the offender device, yes. Absolutely, we can put this device on somebody's ankle and working with law enforcement, probation departments, and the judicial system can literally monitor them as tight as the county, city, or state wants it monitored. If they want to say, this is a crip, and we just want to know if he goes over into a neighborhood he's not supposed to be in. Or let's say we have a sentenced or probation gang member that is not supposed to be affiliated with other gang members, and he has this device, then we can set zones up of where we know his known friends are, houses, neighborhoods, everything. If he enters one of those zones, that monitoring officer is going to get an alert that he's going in there. Uh, this can also be an application that, that statewide usage for parolees, uh, offenders, that if a crime has occurred, then we with a push of a button can find out where every single parolee was at that particular time and see if he was near that location. Wow. So indeed the technology is available. All it will require is a motivated legislature 
to create the gang designation in the penal code and the law enforcement to adopt the tracking technology. Steve Ibsen thinks that it's critically needed right now. We, we can't give up on kids. And even though these can be dangerous kids, I think it's a mistake to give up on uh, our juveniles. And we need to do everything we can do to pull them away. What's not working is uh, just uh, running through the juvenile court system, trying to scare them and let them go home. They're back in their neighborhood, they're back in their gang, and they have no other alternative. So I think we can uh, regulate better, we give police more information, and we tax criminals to help protect juveniles. We want to know what you, the viewers, think. Please respond to our survey and leave your comments below. Number one, should the state be authorized to place tracking devices on known gang juveniles? Yes or no? Number two, do you think our parole system would be more effective if we use tracking technology on parolees? Yes or no? Number three, do you fear this technology could become a threat to civil rights? Yes or no? Please be sure to leave your comments below. Thank you. As you can see, full disclosure is not in the business of distorting the news. We're not in the business of trying to convince our viewers, only to inform them. We are a nonprofit educational organization. We provide the platform and the vehicle where you can hear the various perspectives. It's up to you, the viewers, to determine what is right and what is wrong. If you want full disclosure to continue to shine the light of truth on important issues that the mainstream media just won't do, then we need your support. There are so many important issues facing our communities, our state, and our nation and your tax-deductible contribution can help us get the word out to continue informing the public. You are invited to join the Friends of Full Disclosure. Your support will help assure that we can reach more and more people and improve the production quality of our programs. All you have to do is send us the much-needed support using PayPal. Just click on the link below and join at whatever level you can afford. Our goal is government accountability. When the people are informed on the issues, then the people in government must do what is right, because they know we're watching. Together we can make a difference, but we need your support to continue bringing you the news behind the news. Please contribute what you can. Thank you.